Uh, what comes to mind when you think of a man? What does it mean to be a man? Is it, um, is it the guy with the big muscles and the you know, athletic guy? Is it the guy who doesn't take any flack from anybody? Is it the successful guy, the guy with the big car, the big house, and et cetera? Um, there's a Bible character that comes to mind when I think of that vision of a man, um, Samson. Yet, when I read about this character, um, I'm appalled by him. I'm disgusted by the, the arrogance and the pride that this man shows in his life, um, by the wrath that he shows to all of those around him who, um, who he thinks deserve any kind of punishment. Um, Samson was all of these things, yet the Lord still used him to do great good, um, even earning a place in Hebrews 11, which I think is a great testament to the grace of God. <coughs> um, turn to 1 Samuel 16:7 says, um, but the Lord said to Samuel, do not look on his appearance for, for the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as man sees, but man, man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Samson was physically strong, but he lacked much of the strength that actually matters in the world, that matters to God. He lacked strength of the heart. <clears throat> now, we as human beings, we can't look into a person's heart and see this kind of strength. Um, but I think that in, in our lives, we can um, see some good indicators of this kind of strength of the heart. <clears throat> the first one I want to go over is faith. The Lord's people are to be a people of faith, for as it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. I heard an anagram one time, it's um, faith, F-A-I-T-H, forsaking all, I trust him. We have to know in our hearts and show in our lives that no matter what the world says, no matter what Satan whispers in our ear, God is in control, no matter what that whatever happens will be the will of the Lord. And we have to know that in our hearts. Because if we, if we don't know that, we're going to break. It's, just, it's as simple as that. We're going to break if we don't trust God. <clears throat> James 2, uh, James 2, verses 14 through 17 says, what good, is it, uh, what, good is it, what good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is poorly clothed or lacking in daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, be warmed and be filled. Without giving him the things needed for the body, what good is that? So also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. And so it is by faith that we stand. It is by faith that we walk. It is by faith that we will live. <clears throat> I heard a song uh, one time. It's, um, we don't sing it much here at Freed, but it says... If you say go, we will go. If you say wait, we will wait. And if you say step out on the water and they say it can't be done, we will fix our eyes on you and we will come. For your ways are higher than our ways, and the plans that you have made are good and true. If you call us to the fire, you will not withdraw your hand. We will gaze into the flames and we will look for you. <clears throat> and so, brothers, I exhort you as Hebrews 12 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. <clears throat> the next point I want to make is um, hope. Christ's people are to be of hope. Christ's people are to be a people of hope. The other church was a people that was persecuted for their faith in Christ. They were forced to watch their families and their friends killed before them. If, um, if anybody needs a, um, some evidence that um, Christianity is from God, then look at how the early church did. Um, by all logical standpoints, they should, Christianity should not have survived. But in the writings of Josephus, he says, when one would be, when one would be killed, Ten would take his place. That shows, that's just amazing to me. The sheer power of God to change hearts, and to show, and to re reveal himself to people. <clears throat> In Revelation 21, 1 through 4, it says, oh wait, <clears throat> okay, so why, why did these people have that kind of courage to stand up and to seek, seek after God when they knew they could very well be putting, they could very well be signed their death, death sentence. I think the answer is in Revelation 21, 1 through 4. 
<clears throat> says, then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with men. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore, for the former things will have passed away. Brothers, they had hope in a heaven and a place of rest after all this temporary existence passed away. <clears throat> the world, as Christians, don't be fooled. If we hold the title of Christians, someone in the world hates us. It's as simple as that. Um, but the world can threaten us with a lot of things. They can threaten us with torture. They can threaten us with um, you know, persecution. But they cannot they cannot threaten us with death. Hope is a frail thing. It's easily broken. It's easily shattered. But it is notoriously hard to kill. <clears throat> even in the, I went to um, Honduras over the summer. Um, and even in there, I saw hope in the eyes of our brothers and sisters in Christ. There was a fire in them that said they would not be broken by the world. There was a fire in their eyes that it's no wonder that the scripture describes the Holy Spirit as a, as a fire. <clears throat> Hope is our cry of defiance against everything that the world will throw at us. It's a cry that you won't break me. It's a cry that the God that is living within me is stronger than anything you can throw at me. Hope is our strength and we have nothing left to keep us strong. 1 Corinthians 2, 9 says, But as it is written, what no eye has seen, no ear has heard, nor heart of man imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. The next one I want to talk about is love. <clears throat> now, this is probably the hardest one to truly grasp and to truly express, so I decided just to let the scripture speak on this. Uh, turn with me to Matthew 25. Starting in verse 31. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. Before him will be gathered all the nations, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will place on his right, but the sheep will place on his right, but the goats on his left. And the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father. Inherit the king prepared you for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. And the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry or feed you or thirsty or give you drink? And when did we see you as a stranger and welcome you or naked and clothe you? <coughs> when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? Then the king will answer, Truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. <clears throat> the last scripture I want to read is 1 Corinthians. 13. <clears throat> if I speak with the tongue of men and of angels, but I have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all that I have, and if I deliver up my body to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, love does not envy or boast, it is not arrogant or rude, it does not insist on its own way, it is not irritable or resentful, it does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Love never ends. As for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, that when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I thought as a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I gave up childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I will know. I shall know in full, even as <coughs> I have been fully known. So now, brothers, faith, hope, and love abide. These three. But the greatest of these is love.